Okay, so hi everyone and welcome to today's Tech Tuesday. Uh, my name is Hugo and I work here in Linköping Science Park as an event manager. And we are very, very uh, happy to welcome you to this uh, semester's first, first Tech Tuesday with uh, Combi Tech. And uh, Tech Tuesday is a collaboration with some of the most well-known companies here in the Science Park. Neodynamics, Ericsson, Sectra, Seek and Combitech. And today, Christopher will talk about microwave technology and how it can be applied to both heating food and to melting asphalt. So uh, I'll leave the word to you and uh, please enjoy the food and uh, the presentation. We will do questions both uh, through Zoom and uh, here in the, in the room. So if you have a question, raise your hand. I will come to you with the mic. And for participants on Zoom, uh, please uh, leave your questions in the chat and we will get to them uh, through the seminar as well. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much. It's uh, very nice to, to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher Eck and I'm a manager of a, a development unit at Norrköping in Comitech uh, who has the uh, the um, uh, target of uh, innovative product development of microwave heating, uh, both for products and also for processes, uh, industrial processes. And uh, today I will uh, uh, talk about the new uh, technology of uh, microwave heating, which is uh, based upon a transistor technology, which is look like this. And uh, also an industrial application which is based upon the traditional um, magnetron uh, technology. Uh, the purpose of uh, the transistors technology is that there is a lot of uh, advantage with this uh, technology compared to, to the old traditional one uh, with the magnetron. But uh, first of all, I would uh, like to uh, talk a little bit about my, my team. Um, these uh, gentlemen uh, have their former uh, employment at uh, Whirlpool in, in Norrköping. Uh, so they have about uh, 30 years uh, of experience of uh, development of uh, microwave ovens for Whirlpool. So, uh, and now uh, since uh, uh, 2015, they have been at Comitech and involved in uh, several projects uh, involving both uh, research and uh, development and training in microwave heating uh, systems for uh, both uh, domestics and industrial applications. And as uh, mentioned, uh, uh, the technology is based upon the magnetron uh, knowledge as well as the new one of the solid state technology, the transistor one. But uh, before I go into this, uh, uh, technology. I would like to uh, talk a little about the, the basics, uh, since this is a Tech Tuesday, uh, but most of you maybe know about uh, microwaves already. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, microwaves, it's uh, electromagnetic waves, which uh, consist of both uh, electrical and magnetic field, uh, which are perpendicular to uh, uh, each other. And uh, the electrical field makes the water molecules uh, when they are present to move, which uh, generate uh, heat. As for instance, in water, uh, it consists of a dipole, uh, which uh, will continue to, to move and uh, therefore will create friction and, uh, and in that way create heat. So, and the magnetic field makes a, a frequent realignment in a magnetic uh, material which cause molecule mobility and uh, those uh, heat. And microwaves, they uh, travel in the speed of light and the wavelength in vacuum uh, are in the centimeter range with this uh, frequency, uh, 2.4 to 5 gigahertz, it's about uh, 12, 13 centimeters. So uh, their behavior are fully described by Maxwell's equations. So we're not going to them, but um, you probably know them already. When uh, the microwaves reach our object, they are either reflected, absorbed or transmitted or a combination of these. And the knowledge on how they interact with the material is uh, great know-how. Uh, 
and um, it's also um, needed to measure the dielectric constant uh, to uh, measure how dense the material are uh, consider them the microwaves and also uh, the loss factor uh, so these are the um, the basics uh, of, uh, of uh, microwaves. So when it comes to heating, there is uh, of course uh, some advantage, but also several challenges compared to other heat sources. So for instance, um, uh, one advantage is uh, selective heating, which means that uh, um, an object will be heated uh, rather than another one. For instance, in a microwave oven, uh, the food will be heated and not the cavity inside or the oven itself. Compared to if you heat by a, a stove and you have a, a pot and you heat uh, the water, the pot will be heated. Uh, volumetric heating means that uh, the um, penetration depth of microwaves are depending on the material uh, from uh, millimeter to centimeters. Uh, so uh, that volume that creates will be heated uh, um, uh, in the same time. So it's not based upon a, a surface heated and then based upon the materials uh, um, uh, heat, uh, what do you say, uh, penetration depth. Yeah. And of course, uh, since it's a very rapid uh, heating process, you save uh, energy. Yeah. And uh, you have also an uh, instantaneously control. Uh, when you switch off the microwaves, uh, the heating source uh, immediately vanish, uh, which is an advantage, of course. So both of this rapid uh, heating process and uh, you have this um, volumetric heating will reduce uh, process times, uh, which is uh, of course known when you uh, use it for your heating of your food, but also for industrial applications. And it's possible to reach uh, very high temperatures, uh, depending on what kind of material it is, of course. Uh, and if you know the, the electric uh, properties and, and so on, and you have created a a good uh, microwave uh, uh, system, uh, it's uh, possible to reach uh, high temperatures uh, quite uh, rapid. And of course, it's uh, a clean energy uh, transfer. Uh, there is no uh, carbon dioxide uh, uh, emissions. It's uh, run by electricity. And then there is, of course, the question, how does electricity produced? Uh, but if it's produced by water source or water power, then it's uh, carbon dioxide free, of course. And uh, uh, it's also possible to uh, uh, drive chemical reactions. Uh, we have several applications and customers who use microwaves for lab uh, um, applications uh, to make chemicals uh, react. And uh, uh, well, especially with a new uh, technology, with a transistor technology, it is uh, possible to reduce uh, the equipment uh, size. But of course, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, you need to have a broad scientific uh, understanding on how to create a good uh, microwave uh, system. There is a uh, field complexity since you have both have an electricity and microwave um, uh, magnetic uh, field. And it's also challenging to have um, a temperature uniformity to make it uh, uh, the material even heated uh, and not get these um, hot spots uh, and uh, other areas which is are cold and other areas is very warm. And of course, uh, in a, a process, um, we would like to measure the temperature during the, press, uh, the process. For instance, we would like to know the temperature inside the kitchen, um, uh, chicken inside the microwave. But how do you measure the temperature inside uh, 
uh, material without a probe. That's uh, challenging, uh, but it's uh, possible. And of course, whenever uh, there is a process, uh, including um, microwaves, a lot of uh, R&D activities is, uh, is needed. So uh, now when I go into uh, the, and talk a little bit more about the solid state technology, I would like to show you uh, a clip from YouTube. Uh, since uh, one of the high profile uh, domestic uh, manufacturer have now um, a campaign about uh, talking about this new uh, product of them based upon this uh, uh, technology. So let's see if uh, we have YouTube with us today. So I'll show you this clip. The Miele Dialog Oven complements conventional cooking methods with its innovative M-Chef technology. Two antennas on the device transmit energy via electromagnetic waves through a wide range of transmission channels. The energy is emitted in small amounts, yet achieves a high penetration depth into the food molecules. Since the antennas in the device can both send and receive, the dialog oven calculates the difference between the energy emitted and the energy which has not been absorbed by the food. Thus, the dialog oven knows how much energy has already been absorbed by the food. We measure the energy which has been absorbed by the food in gourmet units. One gourmet unit corresponds to one kilojoule of energy. After measuring the absorbed energy, the dialog oven optimizes the amount of gourmet units still required to achieve perfect results. This is the new M-Chef cooking method, targeted use of energy specifically tailored to exact cooking requirements. In the process, the food heats up simultaneously in its entirety. This is called cooking in the volume and achieves perfect, even results. For the first time in the history of food preparation, the Dialog Oven and M-Chef make it possible to cook food volumetrically and establish a dialogue between the food and the appliance. So perhaps you uh, heard uh, some key words there, um, like uh, 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 measuring the amount of energy, uh, which is uh, reflected back and etc. And you have this evening uh, uh, of uh, heating of the, uh, of the material and so on. Uh, and this uh, video clip uh, shows it uh, looks quite uh, easy, but I can uh, show you and uh, describe to you also that it's not so very easy as it says in the, this clip. Ah, sorry. The, the thing to... <laughs> Close it. So, okay. Sorry about that. So, in front of me here, I have our own uh, uh, demonstration, Owen, based upon this uh, transistor technology. This is a project we made with uh, the transistor manufacturer Infineon, and uh, together with an Italian firm, Green Waves. So the benefits of uh, doing this uh, demo were to show uh, the benefits of uh, this uh, transistor technology. Uh, so we could demonstrate selective and also even heating without any moving parts. Uh, with moving parts, we mean that uh, inside a traditional microwave, when you have a moving antenna or you have a moving turntable. Uh, so by uh, uh, using the transistor technology, we can demonstrate how we can uh, shift the electrical field inside the, the cavity without the moving parts. So this, uh, when we demonstrated in a um, uh, fair in London in 2016 uh, and demonstrated it by uh, showing them um, how to 
uh, heat two cups of uh, water. Uh, with one uh, setting, we could uh, get the left cup uh, warmer than the right cup, or with another settings, uh, because we have the, the vice versa, or both cups uh, at the same temperature. In this uh, demo I will show you later, I will uh, not warm uh, water, I will um, make a plasma and uh, make it move inside the cavity, but uh, I will show you later. So uh, how about this uh, solid state generator, this uh, transistor? So it's possible to have uh, multi-feeding. Uh, you have several um, antennas uh, within uh, this uh, ISM band. ISM is an industrial scientific uh, medical band uh, for this uh, frequency, 2.4 to 2.5. Uh, it's uh, possible to have um, uh, each uh, generated uh, a limitation of output uh, power, but you're uh, able to combine uh, several uh, source of microheating, or you have a microwave as an assistant uh, heating source. Uh, for instance, we have a client who would like to implement uh, this technology uh, within their traditional oven. He has to have this possibility to have uh, a control heating uh, process in the end of the cooking uh, process. So this is a, a picture uh, actually about this, uh, where is, uh, of this oven. So uh, with me, I have my uh, laptop. We have a external GUI uh, interface where we set the parameters of uh, the frequency and the phase difference between the two channels, and as well as the, the, um, the amplitude of the, of the wave. So, we have, um, can show you this uh, picture. So this is the uh, high power amplifier inside this uh, oven. Here we have a, a microcontroller and we have the two transistors here, the black ones. Each one is uh, 250 watts. And uh, before here, we have a, a pre-amplifiers uh, uh, phase. And uh, here we have a component, a circulator, which makes uh, uh, the reflecting power uh, to protect this uh, transistor for breaking. So instead of going to the transistor, it goes to a, a dumbbell, which will get uh, heated. So, uh, this is uh, the uh, technology, but of course, there is uh, some advantage uh, with this technology compared to the, the magnetron. So one of the advantages is that um, the frequency can be chosen uh, between uh, 2.4 and 2.5, uh, which is not possible with this one, it's, uh, it's set. And uh, each uh, channel, for instance, in this, uh, we have two channels, uh, one, two, and we can uh, set the frequency. Uh, it's um, of course uh, good to have the same frequency, but we can uh, set the phase difference between these two uh, uh, channels, and also the um, uh, the amplitude uh, of this uh, uh, frequency or this uh, channel. So in that way, we are able to shift the heating uh, uh, process, uh, the, the microwave field inside the, the cavity. So the total uh, heating algorithm we built up with these uh, settings can be uh, a number of settings uh, based upon both uh, the, the frequency, the phase and, and the amplitude and also the duration time. So this gives uh, four parameters of control, uh, which is uh, not possible with this uh, magnetron. Uh, yeah, and uh, in this uh, video clip uh, I showed you, they told about this uh, load sensing and how it communicates, have a dialogue 
so of course it's uh, possible to to measure however it's not as easy as they uh, make it uh, uh, look like so here we have the the cavity and the reflecting uh, uh, energy going to this um, impedance uh, sensing which were in this picture here uh, in a directional coupler and uh, but this reflections does not include any information about the evenness of the food or what kind of food it is or uh, to, to uh, receive that information, you have uh, you need to have uh, other uh, sensor inside the, the cavity. For instance, uh, infrared, or you have to have a camera, or you have a humidity uh, sensor or gas uh, sensor, uh, which uh, are needed to have a more adequate uh, control of the heating process. So the, my team has, of course, uh, great experience within this uh, area. Uh, the cavity selection and how it's, uh, it's fitting with the antennas and so on is uh, quite important. Uh, the, the cavity size, etc., And also where you place um, the antenna inside the cavity is uh, important. So uh, a lot of uh, different feedings uh, antennas have been uh, tested. Um, but the most uh, um, uh, best uh, experience is this uh, way wide, as you can see in this picture here. In uh, the video clip, uh, they showed you another type of uh, antenna, uh, which is uh, also been used. So uh, this. Uh, load sensing is uh, important of course uh, so it's not only by the reflecting power you also need to have um, uh, information about uh, uh, how how the process is uh, um, uh, evaporating or how it's the progress progress of the heating process so in, uh, it's uh, possible to optimize the efficiency in, in different uh, waves. Uh, dynamic impedance measurement is, uh, of course, uh, good if it's uh, possible. And also to have uh, IR sensors and arrays uh, me measuring the inside of the, the cavity. So to achieve uh, uh, improved heating evenness, uh, there is also possible to have uh, image uh, recognition. So the other sensors uh, which has been um, uh, investigated are both uh, humidity, how much uh, water is evaporated from the, the food, and those um, you get the information on how, how um, uh, dry is uh, the food, uh, etc. And uh, RFID is also uh, an impossible technology to use as well as, uh, well as weight sensors and e-field sensors. Another sensor, I think this this one, uh, is a sound sensor. Uh, for instance, in the uh, United States, it's, uh, well, it's in Sweden as well, popular to use the microwave to, uh, to pop popcorn. And you, of course, you need to have, uh, you want to have uh, everyone popped. Uh, so microwave uh, with this sensor can uh, listen to the popping. And when the uh, popping stops, the microwave oven knows uh, when to stop uh, to, to, heat, to heat it, uh, because you don't want uh, the popcorn to burn. Uh, uh, in normal gas, you need to look in the eye and listen uh, ourselves and press stop. So uh, of course, uh, another experience is um, uh, the measuring of the impedance. Uh, uh, impedance is uh, uh, the measurement on how the interaction of the, the material, the cavity, and uh, the reflecting power, and etc. So it's a lot of uh, parameters uh, that need to be 
uh, measured uh, continuously during the, the heating process. Um, and of course, uh, it's not uh, as easy as it uh, appears to be. Uh, since um, impedance can be uh, one unique uh, depending on one food load, but uh, one impedance can be represented by several food loads. So, uh, but the technology to uh, use it is uh, well known in this uh, group. Uh, and also measurement of the impedance uh, when you design a microwave uh, uh, system. So uh, how to describe it in some, uh, some way is uh, like this uh, scheme here. Uh, there is a possibility to have two uh, measuring points but point A here is uh, uh, more appropriate to guard the generator uh, to make sure that the reflecting power doesn't uh, break the uh, generator. Uh, since uh, if you have this uh, point B here, uh, it's more close to the food and uh, uh, but it's uh, less useful for the, the generator. So it's, uh, what do you say, um, uh, depending on where you place this measurement point, uh, different uh, properties are, um, um, are uh, able to, to be measured. Uh, but again, it's not uh, the total reflecting power who tells uh, the information you need. Uh, you need to know more about the, the food process and uh, what kind of uh, material it is and so on. So another technology is to use another uh, frequency in a lower power level. Uh, we still uh, uh, stay within the ISM band. Uh, but use it as a measurement uh, frequency. And uh, to use um, this frequency and uh, sweep it across a uh, frequency band will uh, give a more of a fingerprint of the load. And uh, when you use uh, a higher frequency, the antenna structures can be smaller, so they can be placed uh, within the same uh, feeding waveguide uh, as the heating power. Uh, so that's a, a possibility to use, uh, well, uh, two different uh, frequency, one to heat uh, the food and another one to, uh, to, to measure uh, the process. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's not uh, just to uh, put up a lot of uh, power to get uh, uh, heating uniformity. Uh, if you use uh, a lot of simulation of the uh, both the placement of the antenna, uh, the choosing of the antenna, and the, the cavity size, and etc., you will uh, get a different um, uh, heating pattern. And uh, if you are able to choose uh, both the, the frequency and the phase and the, the amplitude, you can uh, uh, interact with these uh, uh, heating patterns and to have an uh, optimization. So to design an application, uh, like in this one, it's, a, uh, it's an uh, electrical closed volume, a cavity, an Owen. Uh, there will be, of course, a uh, resonance. Um, and in this uh, uh, picture here, uh, the feeling is from this side. So you will have a resonance uh, and a heating pattern like this. You know, or in a perspective view, uh, it looks like this. And uh, if you have a, a good or bad design, uh, you will get the en energy far into the material or not. Uh, so in this uh, demonstration, I will uh, show you by um, creating a, a plasma. So uh, So 
screen side here. Uh, I hope you all can see. I have a glass ball, which is um, consists of um, a gas and uh, um, argon gas, uh, I think it is. It will be uh, enlightened by the microwaves. And in a traditional oven, uh, it will uh, well be uh, placed in one uh, place in the, in the microwave. You won't see it move uh, at all. But since we are able to uh, change uh, both uh, frequency and the phase difference between two channels, you will see the plasma moving. Um, so let's um, see if it works. And uh, you know, plasma it's uh, gets quite hot, so this uh, demo is just for thirty seconds. Uh, so now, when it's uh, shifting, we have this algorithm uh, uh, showing that um, uh, it will. Uh, uh, shift uh, now it does not uh, yeah well it worked earlier uh, so let's try it again Yeah, well, you saw a small uh, uh, <laughs> example there. Well, it was bad, but uh, usually it uh, it shifts inside the tube, uh, this uh, plasma. Uh, now, I don't know why uh, it won't work. But um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, later on I can uh, look into it and, and see if I can make it run again. So let's move on. So I also described that um, uh, we also work with uh, industrial uh, applications. And of course, uh, in this time, it's uh, uh, quite popular to look into the possibility to shift from uh, um, uh, natural gases uh, uh, or uh, coal-based uh, heating uh, uh, source uh, to um, eliminate the carbon dioxide emissions. And of course, if you can uh, implement an electrical driven heat source in your industrial application, uh, you can gain some reduction of the uh, carbon dioxide emission. So when we uh, work with uh, the development of industrial process, we work like uh, like this. Uh, we often have ourselves on our project idea and we approach a potential uh, customer and, and present the idea and have a discussion if uh, there is any interest. Or we have a customer who approach us with an, uh, a project idea. So we do a, a technical feasibility study to uh, look into more um, in a lab kind of way to see if it's uh, possible to heat this uh, material with uh, the microwaves. We uh, do the uh, measurement of the dielectric uh, properties and uh, etc. And we conclude that uh, this is uh, possible. So let's uh, create a, a small scale uh, uh, demonstrator because in this uh, process you will uh, uh, achieve a higher uh, and higher uh, capacity need. It's not possible to go from uh, a lab prototype uh, from um, a microwave level, microwave oven level, up to a, a high full-scale uh, uh, industrial process. Uh, even though you show and demonstrate that, okay, 50 kilos uh, per hour is possible to, uh, to measure with this uh, technology, but uh, 500 uh, uh, kilos is uh, not possible. Uh, but if you 
to make these uh, steps, uh, you will uh, investigate and you will learn during the way. So one of the projects uh, we are working on right now is uh, to heat uh, asphalt. Uh, now it's um, uh, more of a, congler con well, a big group uh, to, um, uh, who is a part of this uh, uh, project. But we started with a project idea and discussion with uh, VTI here in Linköping. And uh, we had an idea about uh, um, uh, fixing uh, potholes uh, with uh, microwaves. And they were quite uh, interested. And we did this uh, uh, testing in a regular microwave oven and said, yeah, it uh, looks quite good. But um, of course, uh, LKB uh, came into the picture since uh, they um, uh, mine uh, magnetite. And if you put in some magnetite in the asphalt, magnetite is magnetic and absorbs uh, microwaves uh, very well. Uh, the, the process is very rapid and it saves both time and uh, energy. So uh, what we did were to uh, to investigate and we did this uh, technical feasibility study and, and make this uh, lab uh, testing and show, well, this is a good uh, potential. So we went on and uh, we got uh, granted from uh, Vinova to, to make one first uh, smaller demonstrator, which were based upon, um, uh, what do you say in English, uh, cement blunder. Uh, concrete uh, uh, turnover mixer. Thank you. Yeah, uh, and uh, so it's quite, uh, you know, it's a rotating microwave oven. And uh, when it's a rotating, you also need to make sure that you have a good shock structures to make sure that the microwave is uh, inside the oven and not outside and disturbing uh, the other electrical equipments. Uh, so that was quite challenging, but um, the guys uh, achieved it and a good, uh, have a good uh, measurements of the, of the leakage there. Now we are in the step two, we are building this uh, uh, bigger demonstrator based upon, well, it won't look like that one, but uh, similar to, to that blue one. Uh, so we are targeting uh, 500 kilos uh, to be um, heated by, by uh, uh, microwaves. So this uh, project is granted by Vinova. Uh, so it's a three steps uh, um, project. In the first, uh, well, the idea was a study with uh, founded by BVFF, Banavag for Framtiden. Uh, in Swedish, uh, so uh, which uh, concluded and ended up in this application for uh, UDE one, Utmaningsdriven uh, Innovation. I don't know the English word for it, but uh, so and we tested here, as I said, uh, in the lab that with magnetite inside the asphalt uh, cube here, it's proven uh, that it's very very rapid and efficient. Uh, compared to uh, a traditional one. And uh, the project we are in right now, it's uh, to both uh, develop their, the, um, the receipt of the material, the asphalt with the magnetite inside, uh, as well as this uh, microwave demonstrator and um, methods around it. And of course, there is a lot of challenging uh, to, to change uh, an industry who has done uh, in a certain way for centuries to use a new technology. So that's why uh, it's very good to have uh, uh, traffic uh, in, with uh, in the project, since they are the buyer of all asphalt in Sweden, almost. So uh, in this project, we also identify the market and environmental potential, uh, but also impact on policy instrument uh, as well as uh, future possibilities. Uh, policy instruments is uh, quite important uh, because uh, there is regulations and rules about how to 
uh, buy and and use uh, asphalt in in Sweden. And if this is not targeted, it doesn't matter if we have a very efficient and good uh, technology and application and product developed. Uh, and then the last uh, step is um, the coming step uh, in uh, 2021 about how to commercialize uh, the technology, how to uh, make the industry to, to buy this uh, technology and so on. So, uh, yeah, there was uh, the picture of the, of the concrete mixer. Uh, it's based upon uh, four kilowatts, uh, four of these. Uh, and we have a capacity of uh, 90 liters or about uh, roughly 50 kilos of uh, uh, asphalt with uh, magnetite and of course it's driven by uh, electricity so we did some tests uh, during this uh, uh, step of the project and uh, found out that uh, uh, heating 50 kilos of uh, asphalt were about 25% uh, more efficient, uh, energy efficient uh, than the traditional uh, with, um, uh, what say, uh, uh, gas. So this is, um, uh, well, as a, this is a reference, it's not an actual demonstrator, uh, but it will be based upon uh, 200 liters or uh, roughly 500 kilos of uh, asphalt and we use uh, 12 uh, of this and uh, well when you have a lot of power uh, there is a lot of uh, challenging of uh, to reduce the microwave leakage and uh, the EMC uh, uh, issues and so on so uh, there is a lot of work uh, uh, around that and uh, in this uh, application, it's not so important to have um, the possibility to move the electrical field as you can do with a transistor. Because in this application, it's more like uh, turning the material around inside this uh, big cavity. Uh, so uh, that's why we are using um, uh, this uh, uh, magnetron technology. But also since the challenging of this uh, transistor is uh, the largest one is uh, today uh, about 500 watts. And uh, in this application, we need 12 kilowatts. Uh, so it's a lot of these. And uh, the price of these are, well, very, very high. Uh, the dialogue of when Miele uh, is uh, marketing right now, you can uh, go and buy it for 80, 90,000 crowns. So it's, um, but then you get a chef from my Miele as well if you buy one of them. So, uh, yeah, that's about uh, this presentation. So now, if there are any questions, where I can uh, see if I can have the demo working. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, so regarding the, the asphalt melting uh, process, like, do you need a lot of electricity power? Like, is it expected you have that much? Yes, uh, for in this instance, uh, it's a good question uh, because this is a uh, microwave power. This is uh, based upon this. And of course, uh, to run them, there is a lot of uh, electricity power. And you can, an estimation says that uh, uh, about twice uh, or double uh, the power. So to run this uh, uh, demo, we need about uh, 25 kilowatts uh, uh, of power. But like, how can you provide that outdoors? Like, is it expected to be used outdoors for yes. fixing roads and stuff? Yes, that's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, yes, of course, uh, the, this uh, project uh, is about demonstrating the technology. 
But of course, to run it, we will use a cable. But in the future, uh, for running this application, uh, it's possible to buy a uh, help me now, bränsle cell pro cells, yeah, run by um, um, that gas. Sorry, uh, you know so. Uh, so the company we are talking there uh, have a, a power cell about 30 kilowatts, and then we can run this one. But in the, the future targets is on uh, using uh, um, and heating and making asphalt while you're making a road, and that's about uh, uh, a capacity of 200 meters per hour, and that will require a lot of power. Today it's um, uh, run by gas and gas today is, uh, well, uh, the energy efficient in gas is uh, quite high. Uh, so of course there will be a, a challenge, but we think that um, uh, with uh, well, both a good design and uh, how, you, how you make the process, because you can, with this technology, you don't have to do it uh, the same way as you do it today. For instance, we are talking about um, heating. Well, you know, materi uh, the material asphalt is conducted of uh, several materials, as stone and uh, uh, bitumen. I don't know the English word for it, but uh, and if you heat it uh, 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 separately, or if you create a material in one place and then you heat it. Uh, because in the traditional way today, you, uh, the, um, in the process, you have several points of uh, heating. But if you only heat it once, there is a big energy saving. Okay, in this process, it will require a lot of uh, energy, but not as much as in the total process as it is today. So there is a, a lot of challenging. That's why we are having this good partnership with them, um, almost uh, all one in this uh, branch. So. Thank you. Thank you. So Maybe. any more questions? And just to remind the people yes. who are participating via Zoom, if you have a question, please write it in the chat and we will read it out loud to the speaker. Yes, I have a question. Any more um, questions? A little utopian question uh one Doesn't of the, like we the have big sources in the chat. all right well uh we'd like to uh, thank you so much for this very interesting presentation and we have a uh, book for you so thank you so much thank you and uh, next uh, Tech Tuesday will be October 13th, and it's uh, Sector's turn to speak about cybersecurity that time. And the link for signing up is already on the website, so if you're interested, please check it out. Thank you so much for coming today, and we hope to see you in our future events. Thank you. Thank you.